See, senior year is like so important, but so many people go about it with the wrong timeline. Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel ESP Daniela of where I talk about anything related to school, college, scholarships, breaking into tech, career advice, whatever it may be, whatever I feel like. So for today's video, as you already know from the thumbnail and title, I will be talking about the top five high school senior mistakes that I wish someone had told me earlier. So mistake number one is that students apply for college and scholarships way too late. Now I know a lot of times that with the high school senior year, there's just so much going on. You've got to plan for graduation, graduation party, prom, and whatever extracurriculars that you're in. And so college is like one of the last things that are on your mind at that particular moment. But the reality is that you need to be applying for scholarships and applying for colleges in your fall semester. So many times people finally start the process during their spring semester when they have a bit more time to go about it. But those like highly competitive schools to get in with like early admissions or those highly competitive scholarships, like the full rides, they have deadlines typically around the fall. And I made this drastic mistake when I was a high school senior. For context, when I was in my senior year, I was in marching band and I went to this high school of where we were very competitive with it. We went to state every year. And so that was like my whole life for the fall semester. And so once marching season ended, I finally had time for applying for colleges and scholarships. But by that time, a lot of the um, award money that was giving out more had already passed and so I was left with like smaller scholarships that were like less than ten thousand dollars and accumulating that over time and fortunately I was able to eventually win enough scholarship money to graduate debt-free from undergrad and I'm also in graduate school studying public relations debt-free for that degree as well but anywho make sure that you stay on top of the senior year timeline in fact I have a free resource just for you guys that I have linked in my bio description Description. Now, this PDF was created by a college counselor who reached out to me via DMs on TikTok. By the way, follow me there for more college and scholarship related advice. But anywho, she created this timeline month by month of what you should be doing during your senior year of high school, as well as alternative routes outside of a four year school, such as community college, trade schools, etc. So make sure to download that and use it. Now, another mistake that high school seniors make is not taking the ACT and the ACT test seriously. Now, I know that there are quite a few colleges that are pledging to no longer require these test scores in order to get admitted into their institutions. However, when it comes to financial need, financial aid, they are still requiring that, especially if you're going down like the STEM pathway. And so if you are about to take one of these exams or you already have, but didn't score quite a high enough score, go ahead and take that exam go ahead and retake that exam and get to the score that you need especially for financial aid so as an example of this typically scholarships will require a minimum of 1100 on the sat and then a minimum of a 24 on the act now these scores increase if you're studying something instead like stem so it might be a 1300 minimum for stem majors and then a minimum of a 27 or 28 for the act for stem okay so now on to the next mistake i highly recommend that if you are not already taking those ap classes but not only those but in addition to if your school offers them dual credit matter of fact if you have the option to take just dual credit dual enrollment classes i personally would instead recommend that because with dual credit as long as you pass the class you get college credit if you are deciding to pursue your education at a university within your state but if you're someone who's trying to go to a school like out of state typically dual credit from my knowledge doesn't really transfer over that well but this is more so for those trying to stick in their same state like i have but anyway the reason why i'm recommending people to take dual enrollment dual credit classes over ap is that of course you're getting that college credit but then with the ap exam you can still take that on your own time even if you are not enrolled in that class so you can do self-study buy one of those exam studying books whatever it may be and still see if you can pass the exam but if you don't you can still have that dual credit to fall back on see this is something that i should have done because while i was in high school i graduated at like the top 1% of my class. And of course, being in AP classes or IB classes does help with class ranking more than it does dual credit. But I was in nothing but AP classes except for one class that was dual credit. 
and I ended up not really passing any of my AP exams because I did not, not study. study. Ugh, I should have studied. studied. But because I didn't study, I ended up failing. I got like twos and threes or whatever. And so the only real benefit of being in those AP classes was the fact that I ended up ranking in the top 1% of my class. And it was a pretty big class, by the way. There was about a thousand people within my senior year. So being in the top 1% means the top 10-ish people. And on that note relating to AP classes, even if you do not pass the AP exam, just know that there is an alternative called the CLEP exam, which you can take while in college. Typically from what I have heard from people who have taken it, it is cheaper to do and it is easier to pass. So if you are someone who like barely failed the AP exam, but you still want another shot, then make sure to consider checking out the CLEP exam. And I also have linked in my bio description, the full differences between the two so you can know if it's the right fit for you. So on to the next mistake. This one relates to negotiating financial need when you are trying to choose between which school that you want to attend to. I highly recommend that you do not apply for just like one or two universities, but try to apply for as many as possible. You know those posts that you might see on social media of where someone will be like, I got, I got millions, millions and millions, and millions of, dollars of dollars in scholarships. In scholarship. Well, that's likely because they applied for well over 10 schools, 30, 50 schools, and then they just added up the total amount of money that they got between those institutions. And the reason why it is so helpful to apply for multiple scholarships outside of the fact that you can see which schools are willing to pay for your education if not fully funded, you can also compare your financial need package. So let's say school A gave you thousands and thousands of dollars more in scholarships and grants, but then school B, the one you really wanna go to, they didn't give you as much, but you really want to go there instead. So what you would do, you would email them or you would even go to their office and say, hey, I really want to attend this school. Here is the financial package offered from this school. If you can match them, then I will consider enrolling in your institution. And you have to be persistent with this because they might tell you no the first time around, but I have known people of where they constantly just go at it, go back and forth until they finally give in and give them what they want. And make sure on that note, when you are negotiating financial need with these universities, that you are talking to the right person. Like for example, if you are talking to the general worker who works the front desk of the financial need office, they typically do not have the power and authority to give you that additional money. You have to talk to the higher ups behind the financial aid office. So make sure to keep that in mind. And it also helps to have your parents um, advocating for you there because sometimes people might not necessarily take kids and teenagers seriously with advocating for themselves on their own and so it does help to have an older adult beside you to really advocate for you so finally to end off this video the final mistake that high school seniors make is caring too much about what others think and are doing if you are constantly comparing yourself to the accomplishments of others or even let's say college decision day happens and the school has an event of where everyone's showcasing what school they got into and some people got into the top school in the state another person got into an ivy league school and perhaps you got into and are going to be attending a community college do not feel as if you are behind do not feel as if you are not as smart as them because honestly our education system does not properly assess people's intelligence so please do not compare yourself and also please do not entertain continuing to stay up to date about the drama that goes on in high school once you are in college i want for you to just totally not completely but for the most part just sever ties with your high school with the past version of yourself because let me tell you something the me in high school versus the me now in college as an adult totally different people so if you spend too much time going back into the same habits and routines that you did back in high school that honestly weren't good for you like if they're good routines continue doing that but if you're going back into those same cycles then you're going to have a really hard time of finding yourself and gaining independence as an adult now that that has all been covered i highly recommend that you check out all the other videos i have on youtube relating to college and scholarship advice and to check out the resources on my website which show you scholarship resources even like tech internships to apply to as well as my book and online course of where i teach my step-by-step -step strategies to winning so many scholarships between high school undergrad and now graduate school
So as you can see, there are all these other ways that you can benefit from my content and expertise. So I highly recommend that you take the time to look into it. Anywho, I hope that this video was helpful. Make sure to like and comment and subscribe and all that other good stuff and have a wonderful day. Bye.